Welcome to this lesson on the AstroSIP terminals, web user interface, configuration, and administrator access. In this lesson, we'll open the web user interface and we'll take a look at it from the administrator's point of view. We'll take a detailed look at the parameters that are under the following headings Status, Operations, Basic Settings, and Advanced Settings. There are four ways to configure the phone. Let's look at the hierarchy and see which methods have the highest priority. The Astra config file has the lowest priority. This is the file that's used to set up global settings, such as a soft key assignment for a voicemail button. The MAC address config file is next on the priority list. Every Astra SIP phone will have its own unique MAC config file. This file is used to give each phone its own individual configuration. I would use this file to assign paging groups. For example, listen to paging group zone 1. The Astra and Mac configuration files are both stored on a configuration server. When the phone boots up, it queries the configuration server and uses these two files to configure the phone. The next method to configure the phone is the web user interface. By using a web browser, you'll log into the phone and make real-time updates. Any updates made using the web user interface will override previous settings. And the last method is to access the options list menus on the phone. This is the method that I showed you in the last module where we physically pushed the buttons and selected options through the phone menus. The phone user interface and the web user interface have the same priority level. Think of both methods as a manual process. Both methods update a third config file that's stored on the phone. This file is referred to as local.config. So whichever method accessed the phone last will update the local.config file. These two methods have the highest priority and will override or supersede any previous settings. So let's continue on and we'll start with the web user interface. With your web browser open, you'll type in the IP address of the phone you want to log into. If you're not sure what the IP address of the phone is, you can always go to the phone, open the options list menu, select phone status, then select IP and MAC addresses. This will display the current IP address and also the MAC address of the phone. So now in the web browser, I'll enter in the IP address of my phone. To log in as the administrator, type the username admin and the password is five twos. There is also a checkbox to remember your password the next time you log in. On the left, there are four categories or headings. They are status, operation, basic settings, and advanced settings. We're currently in the status category and looking at system information. The first thing we see under system information is network settings. Here you can see the status of your ethernet connections for both the LAN and the PC ports. Under hardware information, I see the MAC address of the phone and the phone model. Under the firmware information, this is where you can identify what firmware your phone is using. To take advantage of the latest options and features, it is recommended that your phones use firmware 2.5.2 or greater. The latest firmware can be downloaded from the Astra website. Under SIP status, this is a good place to check the status of each line and user account. When operating normally, the status will show registered for each line or user account. Now let's look at the fields under operations. First is Reset User Password. Now this is the user password, not the admin. The default user password is blank, which is the same as no password. After you make any changes, you'll need to click on the Save Settings button on that page. A user password needs to be established by either the user or you as the admin if they want to lock their phone. Locking the phone prevents unauthorized use. The phone can not only be locked locally, but through this application, you can also lock the phone remotely. Under this field, you can also modify the emergency dial plan. And if you click on the reset password, it will default it back to blank or no password. Next is soft keys and XML. This field gives you access to modify and configure the soft keys. There are two tabs, one for the top soft keys and one for the bottom soft keys. If you see a field that's grayed out, that means in the configuration file, the key was locked and cannot be modified through this application. To add or modify a feature, under Type, click the drop-down list. The list may vary 
based upon the PBX or call control system you're using. For demonstration purposes, I'll select Speed Dial, I'll label it, I'll add my phone number, and then I'll select which line I want to use when I press this soft key. I can also choose based upon call state when I want the feature to be available. Down below I can set up a services feature that will use an XML application. And again if you make any changes, you'll need to click on the Save Settings button on the same page where you made your changes. Now when I go back and access my Soft Keys menu, you'll see that my Speed Dial key has been updated. The next feature is Keypad Speed Dial. This feature allows you to program a speed dial number that is activated when you press and hold a key on your dial pad. I'll program in speed dial number 214-555-4400 and I'll assign it to the 3 key on my dial pad. So now when I press and hold the number 3 on my dial pad, it'll speed dial the number I programmed. The next option is Directory. This option allows you to save the callers list for this user as a CSV file. When you click on the Save button, you'll be prompted to save it to a folder location or to open it. The next option is Reset. Using this application, you can remotely restart the phone, you can totally restore the configuration of this phone back to factory default, and remember earlier where I said if you've made changes using the phone's user interface or this web interface, that it creates a local config file stored in the phone? Well this option would delete that file. And then the phone would use the configuration from the Astra config and the Mac config files. That completes operations. Now let's move on to basic settings. There's one option under basic settings, preferences. Here you'll have access to the following settings and parameters. You can set up your local dial plan. And if your PBX or call control system supports star codes or pound codes that support call park or call pickup, you can enter them here. How the phone will handle DTMF digits, how it will handle call waiting and various tone supports, line preferences, and how the goodbye key works with incoming calls. You can set up which lines support message waiting indicator, how you want the do not disturb and call forward keys to work, You can configure outgoing intercom, incoming intercom, or group paging settings, and you have the option to repurpose the redial and conference keys. You can select different ringtones for each line, and you can set up different ringing alerts based upon the type of call you're receiving. You have some settings for direct call pickup and auto call distribution. You also have access to time and date settings. The last option is language settings. And as I mentioned in an earlier module, you can download additional language packs from the Astro website. Now we'll continue with the advanced settings. First is network. We'll look at the basic settings first. Since this phone was set up with DHCP, the IP addresses are grayed out, indicating I can't change them. If I was using a static IP address, then you would see that the DHCP checkbox would not be checked. Then I could modify the various IP addresses. I've got a host name, and I can define how I want the Ethernet jacks on the phone to work. Continuing with the advanced network settings, the DHCP download options tells your phone to request additional information besides just an IP address. If you select option 66, then the phone will request the domain name and IP address of the configuration server. Remember the configuration server is where the Astra config and the Mac config files are located. Option 159 allows you to enter in two IP addresses, a primary and secondary IP address for the configuration server. When one of these two options are used, it simplifies the initial boot up and configuration for your Astra SIP phone. But before this will work, You'll also need to modify your DHCP server to include this additional information. The Astra SIP phones also support various forms of NAT, STUN, and TURN. 
You can also use various forms of security and verification options using HTTPS and certificates. You can also set up DSCP, Dynamic Service Code Point. This is the equivalent of a Layer 3 QoS. AstraSIP phones also support VLAN configuration. Now let's move on to the global SIP settings. Here you can set basic global SIP settings that will apply to all lines. And then go back into each of the nine individual lines as necessary and input unique and individual information. So let's look at the global settings first. Your authentication settings will probably be set on the individual lines. Under the network setting, you've got your proxy server and register server information. Under the advanced settings, you've got parameters for message waiting indicator, missed calls, register messages, and various timers. There are options regarding your RTP settings. Under the codex preference list, you can set up a priority of which codex will be attempted first. You also have an option for packetization intervals and silent suppression. There is quite a variety of codecs that can be selected from the drop-down list. Let me take a minute and talk about the G722 codec. Astra's HiQ technology works together with the G722 wideband codec and delivers significantly enhanced audio performance and voice clarity for all of the 6700i family of SIP phones. HiQ compares to other wideband audio choices from companies that market their solution as HD voice. HiQ is a free offer for customers using Astra SIP phones with firmware version 2.5.2 or higher. Astra's HiQ Audio is a software-based acoustic optimization that is backward compatible with the existing 6700i series of SIP phones. The HiQ Audio experience delivers a more lifelike conversation and richer user experience via an embedded G.722 wideband codec in each phone. Setup of the phone involves simply selecting the G.722 codec as one of the available codec selections. Several available codecs may be selected at any one time, but only one will be used within a particular phone call. When the Astra Telephone navigates a compatible network allowing G722 performance and it reaches another Astra Telephone also using G722, the HiQ experience will be rendered. Note that the IPPBX hosted service, router, or other equipment may also need to be set to allow wideband audio support before HiQ will work. The last parameter is auto dial settings. When you configure auto dial on a SIP phone, the phone automatically dials a pre-configured number whenever the phone goes off hook. Now let's look at the line configuration. The line configuration will have similar information that we saw in global, but this is for each individual line and it may contain different user information. Under the authentication settings, it will have screen name, phone number, caller ID name, authentication, and password. Under network settings, it will have your proxy and register server information. You've also got missed call summary, RTP, and auto dial settings. So for each line that needs to be configured, you'll enter in the appropriate information for that line and user. The next field is Action URI. The IP phones have a feature that allows an administrator to specify a uniform resource identifier, a URI, that triggers a GET when certain events occur. The events are listed on the left and the XML command or string would be entered on the right. So when a call event occurs on the phone, the phone checks to see if the event has an action URI configured. If the phone finds a URI configured, any variables configured in the URI are replaced with the value regarding that event. The configuration server is where your Astra and Mac config files are stored. These fields tell the SIP phone what protocol and IP address or path to use to get to the configuration server. And if you use the DHCP option of 66 or 159, this would be configured for you by the DHCP server. The auto resync feature on the IP phones allows an administrator to enable the phones to be updated automatically 
once a day at a specific time in a 24-hour period if the files on the server have changed. And the last field is the XML push server. This is the HTTPS server that is pushing XML applications to the IP phones. You can enter in server information where you can manually update the phone's firmware. The SIP phones support a transport protocol called TLS, or Transport Layer Security. It's a protocol that ensures communication privacy between the SIP phones and the Internet. When used, TLS ensures no third party may eavesdrop or tamper with any message. The 802.1 protocol is a standard for passing Extensible Authentication Protocol, or EAP, over a wired or wireless LAN. The 802.1 protocol on the IP phone facilitates media level access control and offers the capability to permit or deny network connectivity, control LAN access, and apply traffic policy based on user or endpoint identity. Under troubleshooting, you can see the IP address and port of where log files will be saved. In addition, you can filter the information that's included in the log file. For example, the first parameter Line Manager Information has the debug level set for 65535, which means all debug levels are on. Other choices would be only include fatal errors in the log files, or errors, or warnings, or info, or for a specific module, you can turn all debug levels off. As we scroll down, under Support Information, you can save the local.config file. Remember, this is the config file that's saved on the phone and records the changes made using this interface, the web user interface, or the phone's user interface. You can also save the server config file. This is a combination of the astro.config and the mac.config files. You can save the crash log file, or you can show the phone's task and stack status, as well as free memory. And you can view error messages generated by the modules during startup. The support information is meant to be used by Astra's tech support. If you call Astra's Tech Support requesting assistance, Tech Support will use these files to help you troubleshoot. And that's a look at the web user interface. The last thing that I'll do is log out, and then I can close the browser window. In this lesson, we looked at the web user interface from an administrator point of view. We took a detailed look at the parameters under the Status, Operations, Basic Settings, and Advanced Settings. For more information on the web user interface or Astra's HiQ audio technology, go to www.astra.com. This concludes this lesson on the web user interface, configuration, and administrator access.